Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hopefully this audio is coming out pretty clear. All right, so you wanna shoot anamorphic, right? have the beautiful lens flares, you want to have uh, a little bit of like the distortion, maybe the wider aspect ratio uh, that it gives you, that is anamorphic. But did you know how much anamorphic costs to film, right? The lenses specifically, right? Especially in 2019, at least there are more options now to, uh, you know, if you want to film anamorphic, but for the most part, you're spending a couple thousand dollars, uh, if not tens of thousands of dollars to get the anamorphic look, right? So if you do want to shoot anamorphic, what options do you have? You have full well, lenses, right? You have PL lenses, EF mount lenses, micro four thirds lenses. Thankfully now there are actually a couple of brands uh, out now and also coming out. Uh, they're offering budget friendly anamorphic uh, lenses, right? Like pure lenses, not an adapter. And for the most part, that's how, you know, the majority of us uh, can afford to shoot anamorphic, right? Is to use an anamorphic adapter. For me, I own the SLR Magic 40 133 squeeze uh, adapter which I love and also I made a review on it in case you want to check that out. Um, again, it's something that you can use that's affordable. Um, the only thing with that is it's only designed for like smaller lenses, you know. Once you get into like the bigger realm of adapters, SLR Magic does have one which is the Anamorphot 65. Um, it's a pretty big adapter and it's also pretty expensive, right? It comes in at around $1,100. Now $1,100 compared to, you know, $20,000, it's that's a pretty good trade-off, right? Um, but the thing with like these adapters is there's always little, uh, little quirks when it comes to like the mechanics or the operation of it uh, that at the end of the day, you kind of have to ask yourself, man, is it is it worth it to spend, you know, say a thousand dollars, right, for uh, for an adapter, and then whatever it costs for your lens, right, compared to like one anamorphic lens that could be anywhere from nine thousand dollars to you know twenty thousand plus dollars. Now, while we're on the subject of this anamorphic adapter, right, the SLR Magic Anamorphot 65, um, let me talk about the operation aspects of uh, of this adapter because I think that's really like the only thing that it's kind of a drawback and it's something that is preventing me from, uh, from from buying it and also recommending it to you know most people. So if you're filming, say like a music video, uh, maybe like a corporate interview, um, a narrative spot, right? Where you can actually control uh, where people are gonna be moving, right? They're like moving around, things like that. You can control the distance, then it's actually not that bad. But for anyone who does a lot of like running gun filmmaking, uh, maybe you're a one man band, you're someone who doesn't, always have someone with you um, to to set your focus or to help build your uh, your camera system, right? That's where this adapter kind of uh, falls short um, a lot. Now where exactly does the Anamorphot 65 adapter fall short? It's really in the mechanics. So what I mean by that is you have a focus ring on the actual adapter itself, right? Once you have your focus with the adapter, then you need to match that focus with your uh, your taking lens, right? So if you're, you know, just say you're outside, you're filming um, in a location, you only have like half an hour to get your shots, you have to play around with like getting the focus of the adapter, right? Say it's like 12 feet away from um, your subject or your talent. And then you need to, um, you know, if your lens, specifically if your lens doesn't even have like uh, witness markings, then you need to, play around and see exactly where your focus is. And if that person is moving, if you want um, shallow depth of field, like if you're filming at a, um, a, a F stop or a T stop of like a two or a one eight, um, it's kind of hard to keep things in focus and you have to continue continuously focus on your lens and then on the adapter itself, right? So a workaround for that is um, if you can maintain the same distance, then you'll be pretty good. So again, say your talent is like seven feet away. You set the adapter to seven feet, you set your uh, your lens to about seven feet, and then keep that same distance. Um, again, that's a workaround. Might not be the best thing, but at least it's better than nothing. Something else to keep in mind is your minimum focus changes when using these adapters. Um, so for instance, the SLR Magic 25 millimeter Micro Prime T1.5 can go down to about like two feet uh, in minimum focusing. But once you put the Anamorphot 65 adapter on, you're uh, you're limited to four feet. So that's also something to um, to take note of, to be in consideration of. But for a thousand bucks, and then you know if you want to get like a like a dual uh, follow focus system to run with that, you're spending like another 900 bucks, so close to two thousand dollars total for like a working system. If you're a one if you're a one man band, uh, or in a situation where like say you at least have an AC, a first AC. You know, like $2,000, that's a lot of money just for an adapter. Whereas I think the better 
Better option is if you're shooting a lot of anamorphic, like 80% of your work is anamorphic, I think it's better to save up for an actual set of anamorphic lenses or just go and share grid, go on like lensrentals.com and rent anamorphic lenses. Um, it's a better use of your time and better use of your actual money. You know, if anyone's gonna film anamorphic, I think you, you want anamorphic for a very, very specific reason, right? Maybe it's because all of your favorite movies have been shot on anamorphic. Um, you like the anamorphic look, distortion, uh, wide aspect ratio, anamorphic flares, and you have like a necessity, right? Your um, your clients want anamorphic, uh, you want anamorphic, right? So it, make, it might make sense at that point to actually save up a couple thousand dollars, tens of thousands of dollars for anamorphic uh, lenses. Adapters are great, um, but I feel like the only one I can really honestly recommend that I've used is the smaller um, SLR Magic 4133 anamorphite adapter. Right? It's like 500 bucks. Uh, you can buy used for you know 300 shop around, and you get to use just smaller lenses, which is fine, right? Anything from like a 28 mil all the way to like a 50 mil, right, for a full frame. And I think for most of us, that's gonna be all, all we really need. Now that being said, if you have any experience using anamorphic adapters or anamorphic lenses, leave them down below. I think all of us can benefit from your guys' experience. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel as always, just so you don't know if I have new content coming out. And remember friends, every day you have an opportunity to create your experience and to write and tell your own story. My name is David Lee, and I will catch you guys in the next video.